Dear friends in Christ, today's gospel reading about Jesus and Mary and Martha reminds us that the busyness, the busyness of life can distract us from the Lord. It's fine to be busy as long as you know why you're busy, why you're doing what you're doing. We need to stay close to God so that our purposes in life agree with God's purposes for us. I'm sure that's what we all want. And the way to help that to happen is to stay close to God. Because the busyness of life can cause us to lose focus on the Lord. So we need to do what Mary did. Sit at the feet of Jesus, listening to his teaching, if we are to keep our focus on God and on his purpose for our lives. That's why God gives us the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. As Martin Luther explained the third commandment, and he focused, notice he doesn't focus on a particular day of the week, but on the word of God and honoring the word of God. He says, we should so fear and love God that we do not despise preaching and his word but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now the word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat. And that word Shabbat means stop. Or it can also mean rest. So to remember the Sabbath is to stop what we're doing and rest in the Lord, to refocus our hearts and our minds on God. That's what we do in worship, and that's what we're doing right now. We are remembering the Sabbath. We're stopping, we're resting, we're refocusing. Now, Satan would rather we be anywhere else but in worship. The devil wants to keep Christians immature, distracted, and weak. He might not be able to keep us out of hell, but maybe he can, he can try to keep us from bringing other people into heaven or making a difference for Christ in this world while we're here. He wants to keep us immature and distracted and weak. And how can he do that? He can do that by keeping us away from the power source of our faith the Word of God, and the body and blood of Jesus Christ in his supper. Now, you might be thinking, why are you saying this to me? I mean, I'm here. <laughs> I get that. Good point. You and I are here today. But others are not. And they're missing it. And they may be ready and willing to come and worship God if only someone, someone like you, someone like me, will invite them. And this is very important, help them feel welcome in the Father's house. Because you see, God speaks to us through his word, and he speaks through us to the world. He speaks to us through his word, and he speaks through us to the world, including that friend or that family member or that neighbor or that co-worker, or perhaps it's someone you haven't met yet, but the Lord is planning to bring that person into your life. But it's not only about other people. It's about you and me as well. Yes, we are here today. Praise God. But as God's word says, if you think you're standing firm, watch out lest you fall. We are all subject to temptation. The last place the devil wants us to be is in church 
praising God with fellow believers, hearing God's word, receiving the body and blood of Christ. So the devil's against it. Our sinful nature, our flesh, as the Bible calls it, not meaning the physical body, but the sinful nature within, is all too ready and willing to cooperate with the devil. And the world, the world around us is full of distractions from worship. Those are the three main sources of temptation, the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. And I figure, I figure this, if the devil, the world, and our sinful nature are all against us being in church, we definitely need to be here. <laughs> we definitely need to be here. And you know, no one is immune. No one is immune from that temptation. I remember hearing the story of a mother who was calling her son one Sunday morning to go to church. It was early in the morning, and she said, son, get up. She's knocking on his bedroom door. Get ready for church. It's Sunday morning. And the son called out from in the bedroom, I don't think I'm going to go this morning, Mom. She said, why not, son? Aren't you feeling good? He said, no, I feel fine. But I just don't want to go. I don't feel like going. She said, why not? He said, well, I don't know a lot of the people. I don't get that much out of the service. And frankly, the sermons aren't that interesting. But if you give me three reasons to go, Mom, I'll go. She said, okay, first reason, third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. Second reason, you should know that by now because you're 35 years old. <laughs> and number three, son, you're the pastor of the church. <laughs> so get up and go. No one is immune. <laughs> Back to Mary and Martha. I think it's so beautiful that Jesus called to, Mary tw to Martha twice. Probably Martha was so busy with meal preparation that after telling the Lord to tell Mary to help her, and it was kind of rude the way she spoke to Jesus, tell Mary to help me. I think she was on her way out of the room and headed for the kitchen again. So Jesus had to call her twice. I kind of think it went like this. She's walking out of the room, and Jesus says, Martha, but she didn't pay attention. She was too busy heading out of the room to get back to work in the kitchen. So Jesus called again, Martha. And that time she paid attention. What I love about that is that Jesus didn't give up on Martha. And he doesn't give up on us either. Thank God. He keeps calling. He keeps calling and inviting us to come into his presence. And he said to Martha, basically what he said was, Martha, you're trying to do too much. You're getting overwhelmed, Martha. You're anxious. You're troubled about many, many things. Martha, one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the good portion, he said. Now, that phrase, good portion, in reference to a meal, that phrase, the good portion, means the main course, the main course of the meal. When it's referring to real estate, it's the prime property. But when it's referring to a meal, it's the main course. It's fine to have appetizers and desserts. But if you don't have the main course, the most important thing is missing. The most important thing is missing. Martha was doing good things. That's very important. Martha was doing good things. But she was getting so focused on the good things that she forgot about Jesus. And Jesus said, Mary had chosen the best thing, the good portion the main course. Mary had chosen Jesus. Jesus Christ is the good portion. Jesus Christ 
is the main course of our life. The most important thing in your life, dear friend, the most important thing is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And I believe that Jesus is saying to us through this word this morning, dear friend, you don't have to run around being busy to show me what a hard worker you are. Let's just be together and enjoy each other's company. I will open my heart to you. Open your heart to me. Let me get close to you. Let me help you where you hurt. Let me encourage you. Let me comfort you. If necessary, let me show you where you're going wrong. Let me offer you my forgiveness. Let me lead you on the path to everlasting life. That's what Jesus is saying. And that is why personal time in God's Word and prayer is so important. In addition to what we're doing right now, remembering the Sabbath, honoring God's Word, personal time in the Word and prayer is so important. It's about being with Jesus. It's about enjoying His company. And it doesn't have to be hours and hours. A few minutes with the Lord can bring great refreshment and renewal to your spirit. Even a moment can make a difference. I think sometimes we think, well, if I can't spend 30 minutes or whatever number of minutes in Bible study and prayer, I just won't do it because, well, I don't know. A moment can make a difference. Someone has defined prayer as a turning of the mind to God. I really, I really appreciate that definition. A turning of the mind to God. Instead of the mind focused on everything around, turn the mind to God, even for a moment. It doesn't take long to turn your mind to God. Lord, I need you. Lord, please help me. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Turn your mind to God. A moment with the Lord can bring strength to your spirit, peace to your heart, and clarity to your mind. God can do a lot with a little. So when you're getting caught up in busyness, doing many good things, good things, but perhaps forgetting the best thing, please remember the Sabbath. Shabbat. Stop for a moment. Rest in the Lord. Dear friend, don't go to so much trouble for Jesus that you are too busy to sit at his feet. Jesus wants you to know him and trust him and love him, not just work for him. Dear friend, he is your best friend. He is the lover of your soul. He lived a holy, sinless life for you. That's how much he loves you. He gave his life on the cross, shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. That's how much he loves us. And he rose from the dead, and you know what? He's coming back for us, maybe today. And in the meanwhile, he's preparing a place for us in heaven. That's how much he loves us. That's how much Jesus Christ loves us loves you. Come to his table of grace. Receive his body and his blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Sit at his feet. Receive his love. 
and let him love you as you need to be loved, as only he can. Are you listening? Jesus is calling your name. May the peace of God that passes all understanding stand guard over our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting.